This is Pastor John Kress here at First Baptist of Horton, Kansas. Meeting with you again to go through our book of Lamentations. Lamentations is not only interesting in that it is a book about the emotions of a person looking at the loss of the city of Jerusalem, but how it is written as well. There are five chapters. Four of the five chapters only have 22 verses. Why? Because each one is an acrostic. They use every letter of the Hebrew alphabet. A, equivalent to R, A, B, C, D. Each verse is a new letter. Chapter 3 is different. It has 66 verses. Basically, it uses each letter of the alphabet three times. It doesn't go A, B, C, but A, 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 B, 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 C, C, C. For linguistics, this is interesting. Others, it shows that even in the times of affliction, our minds are still of some clarity of thought to try to organize and think your way through this process. And that's what we're looking at, chapter 3, the long chapter of the book. We're going to begin with verse 13, which reads, He pierced my heart with arrows from his quiver. He here referring to God. I became the laughing stock of all my people. They mock me in song all day long. He has filled me with bitter herbs and given me gall to drink. He has broken my teeth with the gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say, my splendor is gone and all that I have hoped for from the Lord. I remember my affliction and wandering with bitterness and the gall. I will remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who worship is in him. To those who seeks him. Most of this chapter is all about the complaints that um, the writer had. I say the writer because it, it is believed to be Jeremiah, but we don't have proof. But he's just listing everything. And it is easy one of us, for all of us to focus on the complaints and when we are going through a dire situation. We intensely look at a situation looking at all the pain and suffering, and, and just, I, I don't want to say blow it out proportion, but in some senses we do. We magnify it so large that it's all we see is the pain. But the author saw a different perspective. Even though most of this chapter, like I said, probably two-thirds of this chapter is focusing on the pain and the memories. He does have that, those few verses. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. I will wait. There still is hope. He chose to look not, no longer at the pain, the Memories of what once was compared to what he now doesn't have or does have and chose to look to God. Let God be his portion. That gave him hope and it gave him joy despite all the grief that surrounded him. My question for you today is God being your portion during your difficult times or is he only being your portion during the good times. I pray that when hard times do come, and they will, my brothers and sisters, when those hard times come, that God be your portion. Not what you once had or what you desire to have, but Him. Let He alone be your portion. Be your strength, your hope, your vigor, and your love to press on. And He will not fail you. It may seem distant, but He is there right beside you every single step of the way. 
Learn to focus on God as your portion instead of the pain of the suffering. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for this time as we discuss our focus during our grief, our loss, our pain. Dear Lord, help us not to be overwhelmed by it. Help us to have a correct view and not deny its reality, but real, make the true reality that you are our portion and are far greater than any pain and suffering which we are going through. You are the one who is going to lift us up. If we wait upon you, it's so easy for us to try to dig ourselves out of the situation only to bury ourselves more. But help us to lean upon you and look to the cross to lift us up. Show us how, dear Lord. And then, dear Lord, if we are not in these situations, help us to be the hand that reaches down by your Spirit and pulls someone else up. We thank you for this dear day of, in your word, dear Lord. We thank you for Jesus. Amen. May you always make God your portion. And in the process, be a blessing by helping someone else out of their pitfalls of life. Be a blessing, my friends. God bless.